so it behoves us to ask ourselves whether we as human beings, single or a community, or in a family, whether we can live peacefully with each other. Organizations have not solved this problem. You can reorganize, but war still goes on. So organization, whether it's world organization or a particular kind of organization to bring about peace, such organizations will never succeed, because human beings, individually, collectively, nationally, are in conflict. Strong nations like America or Russia are at war with each other, economically, ideologically and actually, not bloodshed yet. So peace cannot possibly exist on this earth if there are nationalities, which, as we have said, is a glorified tribalism. Nationalities give certain security. Man needs security. And he invests in nationalism or in a particular ideology or belief. Beliefs, ideologies and so on have separated man. And organizations cannot possibly bring about peace between man and man, because he wants, he believes in something. He believes in certain ideologies. He believes in God, and others don't. I wonder if one ever considered religions based on a book, like the Quran, or the Bible. Become very bigoted, narrow, and fundamentally. And religions like the Hindu and the Buddhist, they have many, many books, all considered sacred, real, straight from the God's mouth. So they are not so bigoted. They tolerate. They absorb. So there is this conflict going on. Those who rely or put their faith in books, and those who do not put their faith in any book. So the conflict between the book and those who accept multiple books. I wonder if one is aware of all this. And we are asking deeply, if you are serious at all, whether you and I and those of us who are involved in organizations can live at peace with each other. Peace requires a great deal of intelligence, not just demonstrations against a particular form of war, against the nuclear or whatever the atom bomb and so on. Those are the products of minds, brains, that have 
entrenched in nationalism, in some particular form of belief, ideology. Though, so they are supplying armaments, the, re- the powerful ones, whether it be Russia, America, or England, or France, armaments for the rest of the world. And they also talk about peace, supplying at the same time armaments. It's a vast, cynical world. And cynicism can never tolerate affection, care, love. I think we have lost that quality, quality of compassion, not analyze what is compassion, which can be analyzed very easily. You cannot analyze love. Love is not within the limits of the brain, because the brain is the instrument of sensation, is the centre of all reaction and action. And we try to find peace, love, within this limited area. which means thought is not love, because thought is based on experience, which is limited, and on knowledge, which is always limited, whether now or in the future. So knowledge is always limited. And having knowledge which is contained in the brain as memory, from that memory springs thought. This can be observed very simply and easily. If one examines oneself, if one looks at one's own activity of thought, experience, knowledge, you don't have to read any book. Or become a specialist to understand your own way of thinking, living. So thought is always limited, whether it's now or in the future. And we try to solve all our problems, both technological, religious, and personal, through the activity of thought. Surely thought is not love. Love is not sensation or pleasure. It is not the result of desire. It is something entirely different. To un- to come upon that love, which is compassion, which is its own intelligence. One has to understand oneself, what we are, not through analysis, but understanding our own sorrows, our own pleasures, our own beliefs, 